designs. I'm getting ready to do a free pattern. It's my free pattern. There probably are other patterns out there, but this is how I do it. It's for the iPad or computer bag that I showed you a day or so ago. This is the one I made for my trip, our trip to Alaska. We took uh, just the iPad um, and we watched movies on the plane. That's really basically what we used it for because we were busy the rest of the time. But it is a, this is this one is made out of cork and it is fully lined. There are no pockets, uh, no handles on this one. Uh, it just didn't, I, I wouldn't have used them. It didn't need it. We put it inside the backpack and the handles would have just gotten in the way. Now I have also made one with handles. So this is the same bag, just with handles. No pockets, no nothing. This one is however made out of all cotton quilting. And it, it is also fully lined. So uh, this one is available for sale. I will be putting it up on my website. But the one I'm gonna make today is very similar. It is also out of all cotton quilting. Let me show you. This is the outside. So this is a, uh, this is Cafe Faucet, but I can't remember the name of it. I'll look it up. Cafe Faucet, those are the two outside lining pieces. Outside pieces, not lining. Um, and then the two lining pieces. All four pieces have 809 on them. It just gives it a little more uh, durability and stability. So the two lining pieces just have 809 and the um, outside pieces have one layer of fleece. And that's all it needs. That's really all it needs. You can certainly add foam if you chose to. You could add another piece of fleece if you wanted to. I just don't think it's necessary. Um, but if you can see, these corners are rounded on the bottom. So I will be rounding all four corners, that two outside and the two lining, um, to give it just a little different look rather than just a square. The handles, I am gonna add handles to today's. This is a three and a quarter inch piece that I have folded over and ironed half an inch on each side. And I have put two pieces, excuse me, two pieces of cotton, uh, I'm sorry, fleece inside. Um, and then I will be uh, folding them again to make a folded rolled handle. So the other thing you need is um, some zipper tape. And this is a 16 inch piece of number five zipper. And let's see what zipper pull I have. Um, sorry, I'm digging in my little, my little stash. I think I'll use a little coffee cup for my zipper pull on this one. Cute, cute, cute. All right, and then, um, so the zipper tape is 16 inches, number five, and I'm using a number five pull. The handles are 15 inches by three and a quarter. And then you fold them in half an inch, and you'll see how I do it. The inside and the outside pieces are 14 inches by 12 inches. Now I'm making it for uh, an iPad. And my iPad in particular is 11, I mean, uh, yeah, 11 inches wide by nine inches by one half inch. So I added three inches to the width of the iPad and three inches to the height of the iPad. So completely versatile, whatever you measure your laptop or your iPad to be, just add three inches to the width and the height and you should be good. Um, so let's just get started. Um, I appreciate you guys.
Be sure and join my Facebook group, Jeannie's Designs, facebook.com. I will be putting the link down in the bottom. People are already sharing fabulous things um, that they've made. It's very exciting because I love to see what other people make. And, um, you know, if you're a beginner, that's fine. You made it, you love it, we'll love it. If you're an expert, I'm sure it's fabulous and we'll love it as well. So um, I have my uh, Red Saloon, Red Onion Saloon t-shirt on from Skagway, Alaska. We just got back from uh, a fabulous uh, cruise to Alaska. We went to Judo, Ketchikan, and Skagway, and uh, Victoria, British Columbia. It was, it was just so fun. Watch my video from mail opening um, that I did on, I think it was on the 16th. Um, because at the end, I show uh, a fat, the, the, really the highlight of the trip is where we got to see some bald eagles. Very, very cool. All right, so let's get started. This is not a hard pattern. Um, it goes pretty quick. Okay, so I got my zipper pull on there and I measured down an inch because we, we're gonna do that butler method where you fold it over and stitch that in place. Let's get some. This is about the only time I use straight pins anymore. It's pretty funny actually. Uh, and so there's my line, fold it over and bend it back. I'm still not convinced that's the Butler method. Um, I should link her uh, description in the, um, her, her link in the description below, but that's how it should look. And then we'll cut off the excess. So let's do that real quick. We'll stitch those in place. Straight pins are dangerous for me. I always end up uh, puncturing myself and bleeding. It's just nasty. Okay. But they're a necessary evil, especially when you're making draperies and doing alterations. You gotta have you gotta have straight pins. That's why I always have band-aids in my sewing room. I bet a lot of you guys do too. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, let's cut that excess off. So you can see how I just stitched. This won't be seen. So I stitch way over here on the side and then I'll cut that excess zipper tape off. And we'll burn those ends. And now that's pretty even and it won't, my zipper pull won't come off. Now on, on my other ones, I have just, I'm um, just doing the thread here real quick. I have a, let me show you. On both of these actually, I just sewed across the zipper. I think for this one, I may either put uh, a zipper end on it or I might put a piece of fabric. I haven't quite decided yet. I don't need to decide that just yet. So that's ready. Now let's do our handles. So the first thing is, like I said, this is a three and a quarter inch piece of fabric. I folded each side in a half an inch and then I ironed them together. We're going to sew down the long un non-folded edge all the way. And 
I'm just gonna do a chain stitch. And then to make the rolled handle, I'm sure many of you are familiar with doing this. I just pick my best side. Yeah. And I'm gonna measure two and a half inches and just mark that on both ends. You'll see why if you haven't done these before here in a second. Again, find my prettier side. Two and a half inches and mark that on each side. Okay. And then we are gonna fold that together. And we are gonna sew from those marks, from mark to mark. Okay, we're gonna leave this open and we're gonna sew across the previous stitch from mark to mark. Let me get my threads here. And I try my best, back stitch a couple times, to go over my previous stitching. Is it absolutely critical? No. You can do this method with all kinds of fabric. do it for uh, my caddies and handbags depending on the handbag but uh, for most just because I think it's easier all right so there's that one handle so the ends are even all right let's do the other one before we lose our mark Could, if you if you felt more comfortable clip this in place if you thought that would help you I don't typically do that but um, nothing wrong with doing it. stop at that other mark that's two and a half inches on this side. Okay. Oh man, sometimes I'm just off fumble fingers. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is, um, one thing, I, I can't remember if I said this in the beginning, but the fleece, I cut my fleece a little shorter than the piece because it keeps it out of my zipper. 
So the fleece is cut 14 by 11. So this is the top, a little shorter. I, my 809 is the full piece, 12 by 14. All right, so this I'm gonna measure in, I'm gonna measure in um, three inches on each side. And that is where I'm gonna place my handle. And if you can see, I want the rolled seam to be up when I'm doing this and make sure that your handle is not twisted. So there's my handle, it's not twisted. My rolled seam is up. So that when I have it out, the nice, un, there's no seam here, is out. So I'm just gonna baste that in place. I, I just go all the way across. It's just easier than cutting your threads. Okay, so now that is basted in place. And while I have this, I'm gonna add a piece of eighth inch double-sided tape because we're gonna add our zipper. And I'm just gonna use tape to adhere it so I can do both sides at the same time. Okay, so that outside piece is ready. Find your top, again, that only has the 809 and measure in three inches. Did I do three or three and a half? No, I did three. <laughs> okay. And let me find my other handle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other handle is missing in action, so let me find that. I'll be right back. Okay, I found it. It tried to walk away from me, and I said, no, not having it. All right, so three inches in, base those in place. Double check you're not twisting. your double-sided tape and you could use if you don't have eighth inch just use your quarter inch that, that'll work just make sure it says far out of your seam allowance so, so it doesn't get sticky all right so those two pieces are ready now I'm going to do the same thing with the double-sided tape on my lining pieces. Okay. Oh, and I need to add a, I need to add a label. Oh my gosh, I'll get to add one of my new labels. My metal tag label. Oh, how exciting. If you didn't watch my other video from the 16th, I got new metal tag labels. Let me grab one. Oh, I'm so excited now. What did I do with them? This is, I got these from um, Alibaba, and I, I've been putting off doing this for actually for years because it's not cheap. Now, I will say, once they do your mold for you and you like how they turned out, 
you can go back to the same vendor and you only have to pay for the product and the shipping. And it was pretty quick. I mean, I was actually kind of surprised. You know, this is the first one I've used and this is, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it'll work. Okay, let's see. Let's figure out where we're gonna put it on one of the outside pieces. Hold on. So let's measure, let's, let's do a center so I can make sure I get it in the center. This is exciting. Probably not for you guys, but using my first uh, metal tag on here. Okay. Let's go down about, let me find my centers here. And let's go down about three inches. So right there. And so I place my washer, washer there, mark my outside holes. I am gonna put a piece of uh, Decadil Heavy just to support that. I've got fleece in 809. It's probably not necessary, really, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. Since this is the first time I'm using one of these, I have really no idea how they're gonna do. So, you guys, if you're a new bag maker and you watch all the YouTubers and all of that, and they have all these fancy um, supplies, don't think you have to get everything right away. I've been sewing for 25, 20 years or so bags. Almost, not quite, but almost 20 years. And I am just now getting, like I just got these metal tags. It's not, it's not cheap to be a bag maker. I, I will just tell you. The supplies are not cheap. Okay, let me make sure that's on there. It's straight. Yeah, I think it's pretty straight. Let's see. So I'll put my little piece of Decaville Heavy. And then I'll put my washer. Yeah, that's straight. These washers, I don't think are the right size, but I think they're actually okay. Yeah, they're all right. Grab my hammer and I'm just gonna fold that in. You guys, this is so exciting. Look at that, it's a little bit crooked. Let me straighten it out. My first metal tag. Oh my, I am so thrilled. Okay, enough gushing, I guess. <laughs> funny. All right, so there is that. And now, let me grab my zipper, it's over here. And I want mine opening to the right. So, I'm going to take off my tape here. And I'm putting it down about a half an inch from the end where I did my little butler fold down method, about a half an inch from that end. 
Okay. And then what I think I am going to do here, I am going to just do what I've done before. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go over it. I don't, I don't like zipper tabs because you lose a little space there. So I'm just going to leave it alone. All right, and then I'm going to add one of my lining pieces. This double-sided tape in particular does not like cotton. It doesn't want to come off cotton quickly, and I don't know why. Then I'm going to sandwich that in between. So my, my zipper is sandwiched in between and my fabrics are right sides together. And I didn't really get that over far enough, did I? Okay. Let's try that again. Let me get my zipper out of the way. That might help me. There we go, that's better. You can tell already. I'm just trying to match up my sides. All right. So this is what you should have. You should have your outside piece, your inside piece, and your zipper in between. My zipper is right sides down to my outside piece. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, so cute. All right, let's sew that on. And I'm using about a 3 8 inch seam allowance because I'm using uh, number five zipper tape. Okay, then we're gonna turn that, open that up, and I'm gonna put a clip on here. It's not the end of the world if my zipper pull comes off, but I'd prefer it not to. And then I am going to fold that seam. I'm not going to top stitch with my lining there. Only my outside piece and my zipper seam. Top stitch. And you want your handle going up. So that's what you should have so far. Let me close my zipper so you can see. So there's one outside and one lining piece. Okay. So now we're going to do the exact same thing with this other piece. The outside goes outsides are right sides together. And if you want to, it'd probably be easier and I probably should have done this, is mark your center so you can mark up your center marks rather than try and match the sides as I'm trying to do. Either one is fine, but yeah, I am, I'm a big proponent of marking your centers, and I didn't do it today. I should have. Okay, perfect. And then we are going to add our other lining piece, and our lining pieces are right sides together. Again, match up your sides.
And if you need to adjust it, just adjust it. It's not a big deal. That's one beautiful thing about double-sided tape. You can take it off and put it back where you want it. Okay. Now, let's do the same thing. We'll sew that together at our 3 8 inch seam allowance. It's probably more like a quarter than a 3 8 so It's pretty close. Then I'll do the same thing and top stitch only my outside piece to my uh, zipper tape, that seam. The reason I do that, it decreases the bulk on the sides. Make sure your handle is going up. And that nothing is bunched up inside. Okay. We're almost done. So this is what you should have so far. There's your piece, front, back, and then your lining is right sides together. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna round all of our corners. Let me close that back up. And I just use my mug. So I'm just laying my mug and I'm just gonna round that corner, mark it, and cut it off. And I'll do that on all four corners. So if you can see that, let me show you. That's what you end up with is just a slight curve. Now, if you don't want the curve or you want your um, pad to be tighter, and not have any extra room, I probably wouldn't do this part. So we're gonna do that on the inside and the outside. So a total of eight times. This is completely optional. The handle is completely optional. The rounding the corners is completely optional. The name tag is completely optional. in my Disney 50th anniversary mug. And if you if you want to make this uh, you know an octagon or whatever however you want to do it it's fine. All right, so I'm gonna open my zipper up a little bit, maybe about halfway. Then I'm gonna put my right sides outer pieces together. 
and I'm going to clip this. We are sewing all three sides of our outside piece. We are leaving a turning hole in the lining. And I leave about an eight inch turning hole just so I don't have to fight turning things. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that I leave almost always a larger turning hole than what is called for. I just, you know, I'm not into bag making for the struggle. And sometimes the struggle is turning things when there's a small hole. Okay, so I'm gonna guess, and I'm gonna just make right here. And right here, yep, that's a little less than eight inches. So now, um, I am going to make sure that this is going towards my lining, which it is. Okay, good. All right, I'm going to do my 90 degree angle, which I always do on any turning holes. And on my lining, I'm doing a half inch. Allowance. On the outside, I'll do three eighths. I'm just going over my zipper a couple times. And I'm decreasing my stitch length on my seam allowance to three eighths. Now, because I am using uh, cotton quilting for the inside, actually, and the outside, it's interfaced. But I'm going to use my peaking shears just to trim, especially the sides and the corners, the rounded corners. And right there. I'm not going to worry as much about the outside, <clears throat> except I will do my corners. That'll just help give you a nice corner. If you don't have pinking shears, that's okay. okay. 
Now, I am going to sew across my zipper and then I'll cut it off. Probably not necessary since I, I double stitched across that. But, you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Now let's just cut that excess off. Fire. <laughs> All right, so let's turn it. It's really pretty easy to turn because I use cotton quilting and fleece. Makes it really easy, actually. Now, because I did use cotton quilting, I could go and iron this when I'm done, just to give it a nice little press. I think I will do once I get it done. Cute. Okay. Now we're going to just close up our zipper hole. I mean our turning hole here. Okay. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to put my hand in there. Sorry. And push my sides out. I didn't do that, did I? There we go. Just an eighth of an inch seam allowance to close off our turning hole. So from beginning to end, if you weren't talking to anybody or trying to explain things, you could easily do this in an under an hour. And that's from cutting to finishing. Now, if you do if you take longer to do it, don't feel bad. I mean, some people are faster than others, and some people just take their time and are slower. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay, I'm just pushing my lining down in there. And because you use a little larger seam allowance for the lining, things really fit nicely in there. It really looks good. There you go. Actually, I don't even know that I need to iron it. Yeah, maybe a little bit right there. All right, there you go. Look at my name tag, my name plate. Oh my gosh, you guys. Thanks for being with me and, and bearing with me as I gush over that little name tag. It is so freaking cute. Can you see it? Genie's Designs. That's my logo. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's all there is to it. Hold on a second. Here it is. 
So just as a recap, the sizes of your outside and your inside pieces are 14 by 12. Now that's for my iPad, which is 11 by nine. So whatever your device is, add three inches to the width and the height. Okay, let me put mine in here and I'll show you. So there, it's in there. And there's room in there for the um, power cord. And if I had a, if this was a computer and I needed a mouse, I could easily put my mouse in there as well. But it slides in and out of there very easily. Now, it's not too big and it's not tight, which I prefer. I don't want to have to struggle when I put my device in a bag. Just my preference. So that's why adding three inches really makes a difference. So nothing to it. Now you could easily add a zipper pocket back here or a slip pocket. You could easily add a slip pocket or a zipper pocket inside. Um, I prefer not to put a zipper pocket inside because you're gonna have a zipper pull and I don't want anything potentially, now I have a cover on my iPad, but if you don't have a cover on it, um, you could scratch it if you have a, a zipper or a zipper pull on the inside. So just keep that in mind. There you go. Handles are not too long and heavy and bulky, um, and they're the rolled handles, and they easily fold down when you're trying to get in and out. So that's the zip, zipper, um, iPad case. I'll put all the measurements down in the description, and I'll also um, put a link to my Facebook page and to my website because um, several of these will be for sale. And, and they're not very expensive because there's not a lot to them. And again, thanks for watching me put my first little name tag on there. It's pretty exciting. Thanks again. I appreciate all of you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.